to have freedom and to have uh, the citizenship uh, participating in their public security needs. So um, I think that militarization is, uh, we tend to, to think on militarization, but we also see, must think on the responsibilities of the political side of the question and the responsibilities of, of those who are supposed to give these institutions a better, better conditions of career and better conditions uh, for living. Thank you so much. So thank you very much, Marcela. So uh, Javier is coming next, and he also has some uh, presentation, some graphics. Thank you. Um, thank you, all of you. It's very significant to, for me to be here because uh, I ran for almost six years a uh, NGO, or I prefer to use the word research center in Nicaragua. Uh, there has been a partner of, of NET for this, for six years or seven, I think. And what I'm going to do, I will show you something that is a little bit more like uh, our experience working on defense and security issues. And I will address my presentation briefly in these three parts. And I will start telling you that uh, Ned and, and my former organization has a, a, a special relation because the first grant we have came, came from the Net. It was uh, it, it, with the idea that, uh, uh, that we wanted to set up an organization that uh, creates some capacity in order to improve the public opinion about defense and security issues in Central America. Well, we, we, we were thinking in Nicaragua, basically. And we have basically these three ideas. I mean, when I came with the first proposal, I, I'm sure, I, I didn't check it out, but I'm sure that was, that was the beginning. And that was the net support for, for the first two or three years. And that's allowed us to grow up and, and, and we are, I'm still saying we, but I know the director anymore, but YEB is, is one of the most, more significant organizations in Central America. Now, I remember that our first grant was uh, almost $40,000. I mean, it was the beginning, just the beginning. We were working just two people or three. Um, now, this organization, after six years, is working in other conditions. They have uh, seven, seven different donors. They are running a, almost a million dollars in budget. I know that for Washington, this number is, is kind of small, but when you think that 98% of the amount that I'm telling you the, of, of the million dollars is just for research. I mean, it's, this, is, this is a unique case in Nicaragua. There is no another organization that mainly is focused in research. So because a, Donors, they don't want to pay just for research. Uh, we look for a way to get the money, and basically this, this organization is just doing research, and, and they have a huge agenda in public policies for now. Um, but they have problems too. Basically, the international community refused to support this kind of institution that have a main agenda addressed to, in order to address the defense policy, the defense public policy research. It's hard to get money from no USA funds. The European refuse usually to support this kind of activity or, or programs. And when you look into the current budget of the, yet I asked for some numbers just yesterday, you have the you have this figure just le, less than 10% of our of the yet bias 
is addressing strictly to civil military relation research. So there is a, I mean, we have, they have been successful looking for money, but at the same time, uh, they have the, the, the big problem that with the, without the net support, for sure, uh, any defense activity oriented to research or advocacy will finish soon. And, the, and that's the, the, the problem they have today. It's kind of strange because it's an institution that maybe they are victim of the success they have because the donors started to give them money, to offer them money because of the abilities they have doing research, but they don't want to do research in defense. They, don't want, they want to do, they want to have research in public expenditure, oversight, in health, education. We have, a, they have a strong public, a, a strong budgeting program. Uh, they have a strong agenda working in violence at the local level with the European Union, but this, that is not the case with the defense military uh, issues. All of this that I'm telling you is because most of you for sure are program assistant or program officer here. Um, in some way, this will help you to understand uh, the problems that this kind of organization are having in Central America and in, and in Latin, Latin America in general. Uh, uh, what was the role of, uh, of the, or what is the, what is the influence of the today? I think that there is no organization in Central America that has a sustainable program about defense studies. I mean, you can see another organization doing research, but mostly occasional. We have, uh, since, the six, since six years ago, we have a sustainable program of research. We have a sustainable program of advocacy. And we have a, a, very, uh, a very like a, a strategic plan about what we wanted to do or what we want to do for the next five or four years in terms of defense and security issues. We are. I'm sorry for the we again, but YEB is focused mostly in, in working with the, at, at the congressional level because there's no relation virtually with the, with, the, with the government. You have to understand that in the case of Nicaragua, there is a, a institutional a situation where, where most of the organization are working in a no access to, of information environment. So, a, the government is, doesn't accept any suggestion uh, or proposal from the from the this kind of organization, uh, mainly if you are funded for USA or for the net. No, it's a problem because uh, we're trying to be nonpartisan all the time. We're trying to bring together experts. We are trying to make proposal, and it's a problem uh, today in a context that there's that that democratic space are are closely little by little. And we have a, they have a difficult relationship with the army. They yet has targeted like a no friendly organization and that's have a, a strong implication for the security of the staff today. I mean, we have in the past some cases that it clearly showed that the, the army is, is always monitoring the, the people working with the institution, and that's bring like a, that's brought like a feeling that it's not a good business doing research about defense in Nicaragua today. Um, what is the role of uh, of an NGO like the like like the YEP today? I think that, uh, or in the short future, I think that we have a a strong agenda ahead, or they have a strong agenda ahead, and we had to keep working in reinforce the concept of civilian leadership and the civilian management of the defense sector. Uh, but we have to, to propose a tactical and operative reports about defense sector. I mean, we understand what, what is the value of, of the civilian control, but we had to understand and have a better knowledge about what is the value of having a 
institute doing a specific job addressing the specific problem that we have in security and addressing a proposal about the role of, for example, of the army in the current insecurity environment in Central America. I think that we have a big role in Central America producing information that can be a, make, that can make accountable the armed forces in the region. Uh, for example, you saw what Marcela presented about the budget. There's a little information about the budget, uh, military budget in Central America in general. There is uh, some cases that you that we have an agenda ahead, like uh, the militaries in the business, businesses, uh, militaries in Central America, uh, former or former military are really rich people, and they are dealing with every any kind of business that you can imagine, water, electricity, bank, uh, loans, uh, houses, and then just thinking something that you can get some money or earn money, the military will be there doing something in Central America. And, and what do we have to, to work uh, in a strong way now is what, is what will be the role of the militaries in in the current environment. I mean, several years ago, I was, I, I was, I was an idea that we do not, we don't have to allow the military to participate in internal security activities. But you had this guy with a big budget, with uh, capabilities, with people, and we have a very secure environment now in Central America. So. I think that Resdal, Yeb, and, and the rest of the NGOs in Central America can be a little, more, a little bit more creative thinking about what it could be the role of the militaries in, in this environment. I mean, several years ago, we started to think about the role of the military in the, in the transition. I mean, I when I say transition, I'm talking about in the new democracies. And I think that we have been a really be successful about that. Now we start. We have to start to think about again about the role of the military in the in the current environment of insecurity. Why? Because I just want to see it to. If you look again to this number, you will see that the fourth country that.